more doctors smoke camels than any other cigarette. Hurry, hurry, hurry. The variance is for your man and you too. That you say? No boulder doctor baloney here. Cheers, everyone, and welcome to the Unfiltered Gentleman. And now, breaking the seal all over the finer things of life, Greg Scott and Dan. Welcome in, everybody. Thanks for joining. Thanks for listening. We are the Unfiltered Gentleman. I am Greg. Over there, that's Scott. Bring it. And that's Dan. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Thanks again for listening. Our burp word of the week is anniversary. We'll get to that shortly. And a huge shout out to Santa Ana, California. Oh, Whee! really? Yes. Somewhat what? local. Keeping it south. All right. For us down there, not too far from Disneyland. So right on. Shout out to Santa Ana. Uh, we got a lot to get to, so we're going to crack right into it. Don't forget to hashtag show us your beers on the social medias. Also, tag us. We want to see what you're drinking out there. Rate and subscribe on all the podcast apps. Apple iTunes, Spreaker, Spotify, whatever you're listening to us on. Make sure you leave us a nice little rating and review. Uh, we got some beers to drink, some crotch talk to get to. We have a listener voicemail, Ooh. some very important sports news today. Wow. Yes, indeed. Uh, of course, old time of the week. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought about that. We're going to be budget, uh, balling, wow, boozing on a budget. That was hard to say. We're going to be boozing on a budget for our bullpen beer. Not balling on a budget? No, no, no. We're not balling. Okay. We're boozing. Yeah. And then, of better. course, been booze news to get to. But uh, as you can tell with my lack of English, I am not very well hydrated. So uh, let's fix that problem very pronto. Grab your libations, pals. It's time for Beer of the Week. And if you're drinking well, you know that you're my friend. And I'll say, I think I'll have myself a beer. Having ourselves a beer, and it's... A celebration. Sierra Nevada's Hoppy Anniversary IPA. Oh, wow. Six mm. percent, 65 IBUs, has a 378, an untapped, and an 89 on Beer Advocate. From the brewery, they say it's a tribute to the best of the West Coast IPA and craft beer's long, strange journey. Hot forward beers weren't popular when we started brewing in 1980, but we loved them, and we knew that if we were going to open a brewery, we'd rather make something distinctive. It's been 40 years since then, and we're still brewing what we love. This beer showcases the bold flavors and aromas of a classic West Coast IPA's intense pine, citrus, and a deep gold color and slight caramel sweetness. Here's to following your passion and to the next 40 years. And the hops they use are Cluster, Cascade, and Centennial. Hmm. What do you gentlemen think of the 40th anniversary IPA? It's like the champagne of IPAs over here. <laughs> Man, yeah. It feels real fancy. I don't know if that can be uh, a taste or not. Sure, why not? I think it does. Like you know, it tastes bougie. Yeah, very bougie, very bougie boozy. Mm-hmm. Um, it also has a very fancy looking label. Oh yeah, for sure. Will, very classy. Yeah, which of course will uh, social media eyes. Um, this one for me, I don't get tons of that hot flavor, but I do get like that old school West Coast malt backbone. Like it's pretty malty. Yeah. It's got a lot of that caramel color, like they say. Uh, a little hoppy on the nose, but not nothing too bitter, nothing no. too strong. Just kind of a old school malty IPA. Agreed. Nothing flashy. No. Very drinkable. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know, Scott. What say you? Yeah, I, l- I love the taste. I can't really smell that well yet. I'm just yeah. crawling out of my deathbed from having a cold. Oh my God. I know the feeling. Yeah, but, but you know, I love the taste. Yeah, this is uh, this is old school. Is this a winner from Sierra Nevada? Absolutely. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. We're Still, all well, we're all winners because yeah. <laughs> we're drinking it. <laughs> That's right. Pinkies up and all. Mm-hmm. Uh, very nice. Uh, good job, Sierra Nevada, with the the hops. Look at all the hops. Yeah, we've got. That's, that's good. Look at all. It's of them. not quite a torpedo, but it's still pretty good. Yeah, torpedo definitely has more of that hop oh, punch. Bang. Like you really get that pine in the face with yes. a torpedo. Right. This is a little more malty. Uh, I'm digging that malt though. Yeah, I th- think it kind of classes oh, yeah. it up. Yeah, it's a little yeah. more protein shake. Kind of a mixture, of, like a little bit of all their wood they did, but mm-hmm. I like yeah. it. Nice it's almost stuff. it's almost like if you had a torpedo light and a just a classic Sierra Nevada oh, pale yeah, ale, yeah. and they had a love child. <laughs> oh man, you know what I mean? A little bit of that. So, all right, well, good job, Sierra Nevada. Happy uh, 40th 
to some hoppy fucking beers you've been brewing. It's interesting. They opened up officially, I think, in 89, but they've been brewing for longer than that. There's a lot. The year that they opened their brewery, there's a lot of breweries like in California that also opened. It's really interesting. I should do a whole little thing on that instead of just talking about it. Um, all right. Let's move on to some crotch talk. Have a grievance to share? It's time for a crotch talk. One of my grievances, I now have a feeling, will also be one of Scott's grievances. Mm. I don't know about you guys, but boy, did the fucking death plague <laughs> take me out the last couple of weeks. Are you guys serious? Oh, my God. Hmm. So, a little spoiler alert. We often record two shows at a time. Sometimes. Uh, it's easier to uh, coordinate schedules and whatnot. And so, we recorded two weeks ago. And that night, as we recorded, I thought I was fine. But I was really cold that night. I'm never cold. And by the next day, like when I woke up the next the following morning... I was cold. I had the chills. I had the aches. Like it was oh my full God. on. And that, so that was like Tuesday. By the time Friday rolled around, I was just dying. I was in so much pain. I could hardly move, especially at nighttime. Like just the, the body aches and chills and everything. Oh shit. Oh man. my God. It's a, I didn't drink for almost two weeks. <gasps> Whoa. Well, I usually, like I was talking to someone like, Oh, I always drink when I'm sick. I always drink when I'm sick too. Like it really makes no effect on me. Uh, I had no real desire in drinking the whole time. And then I got to this point where I couldn't smell or taste anything. Oh, yeah. Like, even my nose wasn't even plugged up. I just, nothing, I couldn't smell, I couldn't taste. No way, really? Yeah. Like, to the point where I was like, fuck, I should drink these really shit beers that no one wants in my (laughs) fridge. (laughs) Uh, But so I was like, what's the point in drinking beer if I can't taste it? it. Because if I just wanted to get hammered and I can't taste, I'll go grab some whiskey or something like that. I'll do the trick real fast. Oh, man. I don't need to waste my time on some lower ABV at that point. Should have brought over those Modellos I have in the back of my fridge. Right. <laughs> you should have told me, man. I would have came to your rescue. <laughs> or more like me coming to your rescue. That's right. Um, so, yeah, I w- it was just shy of two. I mean, it was two weeks ago today that I it started. And uh, I, I'm back to mostly normal. I got a little bit of that post-nasal drip. That's kind of like uh, making your throat sore a little bit. So you probably hear it a little bit in my voice. But other than that, I, I don't think I'm contagious or anything like that. Finally back to drinking. Saturday was my first night back on the sauce. And, Congrats. Uh, yeah. And it was like, oh, I have a beer. Then I had a beer and I was like, oh, we're going out tonight? Okay. Got ham skied. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll talk about that in a minute. But it sounds like you're dying of the plague too. Yeah. Holy I'm kind hell, of, man. Yeah. I wonder if we had the same thing could be yeah. i don't think i was contagious the night we recorded because there weren't any symptoms other than being cold and they yeah. say if you're not you know symptomizing you're not really contagious i think just down to the the voice and the coughing and the yeah. nasal thing yeah but you can i finally sound like a man so it's about time yeah those, those things finally dropped yeah oh, geez. <laughs> congrats about time. you sound yeah. like me now yeah <laughs> <laughs> let's hear your joe impression <laughs> peter <laughs> oh damn that's <laughs> pretty good <laughs> I should have done that a few days ago. <laughs> yeah, man, it's going around. Wow. It so is, did you have the same thing, Scott, with the aches and everything or what? Uh, I was aching a couple of days ago. Yeah. Oh, fuck, man. It was bad. Like, I But I didn't stop drinking. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I I, just, I couldn't taste. I was like, what's the point? That didn't matter. Yeah. Um, it was funny. I'd get up and I'd start to move. And I just looked like a real fucking old man. Like I could hardly bend my knees and shit. And the wife's like, are you okay? I was like, define okay. <laughs> like, I want to kill myself. Uh, I've been sober for days upon days. God. Uh, I yeah. can imagine that. It was bad. It was so bad. And then I was like, oh, I, I'm not drinking, but maybe I'll get stoned or something. Like, I'll pop a gummy, and maybe that'll make me feel better. I said, like, you know what? I should read up on this before I do. I've never gotten stoned <laughs> while sick before. And I was, I don't measure out my NyQuil when I go to bed. I throw away the measuring cup immediately and just hit off the bottle. And I was like, hmm. And I read some things where it's like THC and NyQuil could really go oh, together. I <laughs> and I was like, okay, maybe I won't do this. Oh, man. Not when I got to wake up and go to work in the morning. Yeah. You know, if I was taking days off, maybe. But I was like, okay. So I was fucking totally tober for hey, a couple weeks. You'd wake up uh, a new man, I think, with yeah. NyQuil and weed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Holy hell. Wake up an artist with like a beret on and everything. <laughs> yeah, or like, something. <laughs> make some new life decisions. Holy hell. Yeah, it was the worst. And I talked to some other people through work and they're like, oh yeah, it's going around. Like everyone yeah. knows someone who basically died last week. And mm-hmm. it was- That's what my wife was hoping, but. <laughs> that wasn't the plague. She mm-hmm. poisoned you with some shit. Yeah, I, I mean, I wake up everywhere like an old man, <laughs> yeah. obviously. Yeah. No, everyone she's is- got the life insurance on speed dial. <laughs> 
Only, <laughs> only going to get five bucks. Yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> that's five bucks. It's a meal at McDonald's. There you go. It's true. Yeah, it's yeah. a happy D- meal. Dollar menu. I mean, it, is it, the bonus is I'm not around anymore. So it's that's true. Like her she'd probably dog. pay at that. Her point. and the dog. Yeah, yeah, she'd pay five bucks to get rid of me. Yep, yep. So. I'm just gonna say it. So hopefully, I jinx a bit. Everyone around me has been getting sick, so I'm just. I think it's just a matter of time. Well, you had it the week before we last recorded because you came in and talked about. Getting yeah, sick. but oh, it was yeah. just sniffles. Yeah, you caught the light. The light side of mm-hmm. it. That's my. My favorite when like people are sick around you and you get it for like a day, I actually enjoy that because then you know your your immune system is building up antibodies and I shit. I hope so. That's my favorite. <laughs> Cuz once once you get a cold, you'll never get the exact same cold again. That's right. right but so, I don't think I got what you guys got. This sounds like serious. It was bad. I'm I'm pretty oh, yeah. sure it was the flu. People kept kept yeah, asking me. It has to be. Yeah, they kept asking like, "Hey, did you have the flu?" I was like, well, I guess really the only way to know that is if A, I went to a doctor, which that doesn't happen, or B, I had a thermometer to see if I had a fever. And I started joking with my wife. I was like, what adult that doesn't have children owns a thermometer? <laughs> I do. You, do you own a thermometer? Yeah. I mean, like a... I have an anal one. To see... Yeah. <laughs> doesn't tell you the temperature. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure what it's for. Yeah, well, just, I am sure what it's yeah. for, but... Never. But but you have one to like tell you yeah because uh, I don't know because sometimes yeah I'll wake up I'm like holy god I feel like shit <laughs> you know maybe I put that you know, I don't feel like God holy shit yeah. I feel like God but anyways like you know and and I guess that's why it happened holy I was god, like I, I need like a shit. thermometer so I got one just to like find out like because you know what they say they say like starve a fever feed a cold right so like if I ever it seems like whenever I get the flu. I just haven't eaten yet, and it's good because I feel like vomiting, and there's nothing to vomit, you know, sometimes. So I, I, I like to know. It's like, am I feeling that bad? Am I overreacting? And I just kind of feel better about it. Yeah, luckily this wasn't a stomach flu. Yeah. Just, you know, Ooh, flu, yeah. flu, because yeah. that's, that's the worst. But. Yeah. Well, I used to get the flu, like, times two or something, because I was getting everything bad, and I, I don't know. <laughs> hopefully, like I said, I'm, I I got my, my immune system back. Hopefully so. so. We'll find out. Yeah, mine sure failed me a couple weeks ago, so Man. we'll see what happens. But yeah, yeah, I was like, I don't. I don't really need a thermometer because either I'm sick or I'm not. Yeah, it's, I yeah. mean, I'm like, oh, I guess I'm sick. Oh well, and I just go about my <laughs> usual routine. Yeah, and I, and I had a flu shot. So I'm like, well, I had a flu shot, so it can't get yeah. too bad. I did not. And my boss, when he heard me, he, he called me one day. We don't work in the same <laughs> office. He calls me, goes, "Shit, are you sick?" <laughs> and yeah. And then like a week later, he called me. And, I mean, he called me between then and now, but it, it was like a Monday where he goes, "Jesus, are you still sick?" He's like, did you get a flu shot? I said, no. He goes, that's probably for the better. He goes, me and my daughter got flu shots. We mm-hmm. both got the flu the next day. <laughs> that's right. That's like, that's why I don't get flu shots because they don't, they only work like 30% of the time. And the, half the time when you get them, you get the flu from getting them. I mean, the doctors yeah. say you don't. So uh, I, I haven't gotten a flu shot since I think I was like 12. Good. Yeah. Good for you. Except for the, I did get a swine flu shot. Oh, when did that you really? was going around. And you didn't get swine flu? I did not get it. it, was, oh, man, it, was, it was that was something serious. It was. I was like, I better, because at, at, well, Anyways, I was working around people that were potential carriers for it at the time. <laughs> High potential. Swine. Yeah. yeah. I was about to say. I was a farmer Worked for a, a while. pig farmer. Yeah. <laughs> Suey. A couple of my friends still call each other swines because of the swine flu. <laughs> because they were just joking around. They're like, you swine? And they Jeez. still say it to this day. I just thought about that. It was because of swine flu. <laughs> that's funny. So, uh, so yeah, that's been my last couple of weeks. And it sounds like Scott's last couple of weeks, too. Um, I did lose a couple pounds from not drinking, which was nice. At first, I gained weight because I was really eating. <laughs> I was so fucking hungry because I was mixing like Mucinex and Dayquil, which is just like <laughs> cocaine and cocaine. <laughs> my my, uh, my uh, hunger level was on an all-time high. Wow. Finally got that under control. And That's I was good. doubling up on everything, too. It's like, never take more than one Mucinex. I was like, two? All right. No problem. <laughs> so when I finally went back on the sauce the other day, I, I had one beer. And then we went out for uh, Wiley over at the Booze League. His birthday we went to Dave & Buster's. And I was like, oh, I'll take it easy. I'll have like a couple beers. People just kept handing me beers all night. I was I was hammered by the end of the night. And it was a cheap date, too. It was my first night of drinking in almost oh, two yeah. weeks. I think I had like five of the 22-ounce beers. I was drinking Stone IPA the whole night. Oh, man. First of all, Dave and Buster's, here's a crotch talk. We talked about this few, when I went a few months ago when they first opened. Oh, yeah. They had an okay craft selection. We kind of started talking about B-dubs, how their mm-hmm. selection has gone down. Well, they had almost no craft selection this time. Last time, they had Vig Mountain and uh firestone and a couple other like semi-local beers the usual suspects the, u- the usual suspects but fig mountain was a nice welcome surprise okay. that's, that's pretty local this time it was stone ipa firestone 805 or big beer that was it wow so i drank a lot of stone ipa i got five of those like 22s and yeah and that did me in because that was a cheap date but <laughs> 
Fuck you, Dave and Buster's. I know, man. Yeah. Yeah, that's usually what I drink is the stone, because that's that's it, man. That's yeah. all they got. Yeah. I'm not drinking fucking Budweiser. Mm-hmm. I just I, I, I will I won't do it. I've gone to concerts where they've only had Budweiser on tap and I just didn't drink. Mm. I just can't do it anymore. I can't it's not worth the money to me. I'm not paying twelve bucks for a Budweiser. <laughs> just not gonna do it anymore. Uh so that was Dave and Buster's and then uh, last Monday I'm sick as fuck. It was like my it was the first day where I started to level out, so I wasn't dying, but I still wasn't doing well. I uh, went to the Laker game. Somebody had hooked us up with some really nice tickets. I was like, fuck, I can't miss out on this. Mm-hmm. They were, I mean, they were uh, right center court, like halfway <laughs> up. It was it was right below the boxes at Staples oh, Center. Wow. Uh, so it was really, really nice seats. Nice. This is where the waiters come out around and take your order. Uh, it was great for the wife because I wasn't drinking still. She's like, is it okay if I drink? I was like, yeah, fucking go for it. <laughs> in the game, she's walking around with the buzz. <laughs> I'm sure glad you drove. Like, oh, yeah, me man. too. <laughs> uh, but it was a great game. They played the uh, the Cavs that night. and uh, Well, they beat the crap out of them. Well, they did in the second half. Mm-hmm. The whole first half, they were losing. <laughs> it's like, you idiot. What are you doing? And then the second half, they're like, oh, I guess we should start playing now. Yes. And they annihilated them. Yeah. Um, so that was that. That's uh, that's pretty much it for me for crotch talking. Anybody any grievances? Mm, I guess uh, yes. Uh, yesterday, well, not yesterday, Sunday. Mm-hmm. Um, I had some people over. At least I put an invite out to have people over to uh, watch the uh, championship games. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I made some spaghetti. Spaghetti. You know? Oh yeah. Is it a football tradition? No, just uh, just something I wanted to make. You okay. know, and it's something because I learned from uh, the Godfather. Clemenza's like, ah, come here, Mikey. Let, let me teach you something. You never know. You might have to cook for 20 guys one day. <laughs> so I'm like, hey, that, that's what I'm going to make. So, uh, and it's easy to make in bulk. Oh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, just fire it up. And yeah, uh, yeah nobody showed up. For real? Well, I mean, two people showed up. And it was, uh, and I had put an invite out to the fantasy football league that I run. Okay. I was like, hey, you know, hey, and I'll, I'll pay up to the winner and everything, and we'll talk about fantasy football or whatever. Like, my brother showed up, which that was cool. And right. then one of my buddies, who isn't in the league anymore but used to be, showed up. And I thought that would be cool to, like, kind of surprise everybody. But, like, nobody else showed up. <laughs> and I guess, like... It's, surprise was on you. Yeah, it kind of was, you know? It was, well, it was the Niners, right? So who <laughs> yeah, that? that's true. Yeah. Nobody watches that. <laughs> Only the best football fans in the world. <laughs> I will say about their fans, though, you're cool. Fuck you. Fuck you. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, but like uh like my brother, like that's the reason why he showed up is he was trying to get away. Hopefully his wife isn't listening to this, but uh he's trying to get away from his family. She probably is. Who's a bunch of suddenly 49er fans. Out of nowhere? Yeah, out of nowhere. Because they're good yeah. this year. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's, we can all attest to the fact that I've been Niner fan for years. Yes, True. exactly. And, and you're also all, yes. and yeah. you're also not NorCal too, so you're also kind of like taken away from that too yeah i'm not hella crazy yeah exactly yeah so you know that 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 was kind of my issue with them and my brother was like all right yeah let me come down and you know have some spaghetti we'll watch uh watch some (laughs) of the games yeah and i make some it's that legit spaghetti man so everybody missed out on that and it was funny because i was talking to one of my buddies who were like man it's like the league isn't what it used to be we used to talk shit and you know all this stuff and it's like yeah it's like i'm gonna do something at the end of the year See if we can get everyone together and get it back the get way it was. A fight going or something. Yeah. yeah, and it's like they don't want it, man. <laughs> it's man. like the league's gonna die. Everyone's got gonna, kids now. Yeah, it, I think that's what it is. My fault for like making friends with people who keep all these weird odd hours that like <laughs> you know like police officers or nurses or whatever. They got all these weird ass right. hours. Well, your brother's a bartender, right? He, well, he used to be. Oh, no, he works for the city now. So oh, those okay. only wow. people that showed up were city workers. Right. I just thought about. It. <laughs> yeah, my buddy and my brother work together because so. they always have Sunday yeah. off. They were off today too. Oh, Oh, that's right. My they had, uh, had, had to fucking work. They had Monday off too. That's yeah. Right. yeah. So it's a great part about working for the government. I know. So uh, yeah, fuck my league, dude. Sorry about that. It's okay. Sorry to hear that. <laughs> Are we that politically correct now that we can't even talk shit about sports? I guess. Wow. You yeah. got to be careful. Yeah. <laughs> I know, man. That's true. I know. Uh, well, speaking of uh, crotch talk, Fontana Jim called in and had oh, a grievance nice. to share with us. So here's oh, our shit. voicemail from Fontana Jim. Please leave a message. That's real fancy. Hey, <laughs> yeah, still the Jets. Steve Fontana, Jim here. You know, I gotta get something. I gotta get something off my chest. I guess. I guess you could say this is my this week's crotch talk. No shit. What the fuck is it with everyone trying to make us be good for a month? This dry All January, right. this sober October, no nut November. <laughs> what the fuck, man? Why can't we have something that's good and fun, like? 
Get yourself fucked up Friday, February, where every Friday you just get all fucked up and drunk and wake up with a hangover Saturday. That sounds like good. How do we get that fucking started? What do you guys think? <laughs> See you later. later. I think Jim for president. Oh, yeah. Hell, yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. We've had this conversation before. We we're kind of shaming everyone for doing that crap and giving into social... Dry January. Yeah. Come Fuck on. Fuck you. That's right. The worst is the people... I know there's people on, on Instagram, because they've said it, who are doing dry January, but still posting beer pics that they've just taken and, and have saved up in their phone. Come on. If you're going to do dry January, <laughs> don't be posting beer pics, you know, but what, just don't fucking do it. That... <laughs> That doesn't make any sense. No. It's like saving evidence that you're a pussy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then like, well, I'm not really, but I do want to post that I am. Like, right. what the fuck's wrong with yeah. you? Yeah. Fuck that. I mean. I'm with Jim here. Yeah. I am too. I mean, for me, I have, I mean, December for me is drunk ember because right. I'm off half the month. So yeah, I'm me like too. just fucking hammered the whole month. <laughs> Plus the holidays and all that. And even, and when January comes around, fuck the dry January. I'm just, you know I'm not going to get as drunk as I did in December, but I'm still going to be drinking. Yeah. First of all, we've got to do our part to keep those beer uh, to keep the breweries in business. Exactly. Because all these idiots are doing dry January. Why? Come on. <laughs> Why? Now I think one of our friends, uh, Jose, participates in dry January. So sorry, Jose, but we don't approve. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we don't. We don't. We don't. Yeah. yeah. We don't. Do your part. Help these breweries stay alive in January. Yeah. It's a cold winter for everybody. Mm-hmm. Okay, Jose, I'm going to drink whatever you didn't drink. Yeah, I'm bring just, it on over. I'm going to double it up. <laughs> yeah, but well, we need some months where it's like everything is in excess. Yeah. Yeah, where you got to drink as much as you can. Well, I'm down with fucked up Friday, yeah. February. You need yeah, I like that. Drain your balls, March. Forget Friday, just <laughs> fucked up February. Yeah. Drain your balls, March. Drain your balls, March. <laughs> yeah. Just everywhere spider-man yeah. march oh, God. spider-man march so that's what we'll call it oh. you don't know what a spider-man is look it up sticky google it bitches <laughs> not here to educate you thanks paul that's right <laughs> uh make sure you follow jim on the uh, the grams and the twitter at the fontana jim i think it's also on grams definitely on twitter uh thanks fontana jim if you guys want to leave us a voicemail it's 805-538-BEER 538-2337 uh everybody go and vote Montana Jim for president. Yeah. Heck yeah. Yeah. I and mean, the way he came with it, too. There was no yeah. pussy footing around with that's that right. one. No. That was a good, strong call. He's got conviction. Yeah. Jim Rome would have said, yeah, that, that's a good call right there. Yeah. Yep. yeah, yeah. He would have won the smack off, I think. Exactly. <laughs> I think they should call and give us a slogan for every month, like fucked up February. Oh, yeah. Malt liquor mark. Or, you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's your new job. Come on, Fontana yeah, Jim. Yeah. Come on, guys. Right. We, Everybody, we, get in there. We need a whole calendar of getting <laughs> fucked up. Spider Man September. <laughs> there we go. Put Spider Man in there. <laughs> <laughs> oh god can't wait to see what comes with the jays <laughs> all right let's oh. talk a little sports and now the sports brought to you by cleaning up the glass.com whether it's the baltimore chop or the one-two punch it's time for sports <laughs> oh. oh man I'm going to be one of those annoying fans for a couple of minutes here. Yeah, I bet. I found this is back when like the Bears were doing their Super Bowl rap. They made this 49ers song. I didn't know it existed till today. <laughs> Everyone was about making a rap about their team back They were then. all horrible, too. <laughs> yeah. this, this is no exception. Wow. I love the Niners, but uh, no exception. Well, 49ers and the Chiefs, if you haven't heard, are going to the Super Bowl. Yep. I am very excited. No matter what side you're on, it's going to be a fantastic game. I think so. It's going to be a great game. The think, 49er defense is the best in the league. I, I think the Niners are going to win. Ooh, you're, you're really? Now. Oh, yeah. Here we go. I, I think go. I like that. last I checked, I think the Chiefs were favored. Barely. Two. I Take mean, the you bet, gotta, dude. Yeah. You heard it here. I think it was negative three for the Chiefs. <laughs> Dan's so. locked for the week right there. <laughs> Dan's locked it in. <laughs> yeah, two good explosive teams. Man. Yeah. I think it's going to be a good Super Bowl. I, I think Jimmy G. Yeah, Jimmy G saved his arm on Sunday. Yeah. I think he yeah. had all of yeah. seven passes the entire he game. Didn't, he didn't yeah. with fucking yeah. Kevin Coleman, man. That oh, guy, man. He's a beast. Well, too bad he went out early in the game on Sunday oh, in the champion, right. uh, NFC Championship. He dislocated his right shoulder. Shoulder. He's expected uh, to be back okay. for the Super Bowl. They haven't confirmed that oh, completely, yeah. but they expect at this point him to be back. So that's he, good news. He played with one arm, I think, in the Super Bowl. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
what's his name? Mostert, Mostert. I always fuck up his name on the Niners. Oh, that's who I meant. Mostert. Oh, okay. I saw Tevin Coleman on the rundown. Oh, got Coleman got up. injured. I think it was in the second quarter. Mostert, some Mostert uh, was a fucking beast. Yeah, that was great. After the game, uh, they were interviewing me. And he goes. Uh, yeah, I gotta be honest. Beginning of the season, I didn't know who the hell you were, <laughs> but you had quite the game, son. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. They figured out who their best running back is just in time. Yep, yeah. They needed that for the big game. It's like who we're we gonna give the ball to. Like, don't waste your time with anybody else. Just give it to him. Well, they He'll couldn't stop everyone. him. Yeah, I mean, they, every single play, he got the ball. And the Chiefs won't be able to either. I don't think. I hope not. I don't. Think and the so. crazy thing is, there were multiple weapons that they didn't even utilize in that game. They never went to Kittle. They never went to Sanders. Mm-hmm. They hardly went to Debo Samuel. Have to. Those three were were very much not used the entire game. So there's three weapons that they're saving for the Super Bowl mm-hmm. on top of Mostert and Coleman if he makes it back. So mm-hmm. uh, I'm excited. Yeah. Although playing devil's advocate, uh, this that running back, the Titans. What's his name? The that's, that's Henry. Chiefs shut him down. That's true. But that's, that's what I said before the game. If they can shut Henry down, yeah. they're done. Because that's their only weapon, though. Pretty exactly. much. So the, Tannehill's new. <laughs> Tannehill's Tannehill. That would yeah. be interesting to see, though, if the uh, Chiefs make the 49ers. They say, hey, Grappolo, you're the one that's going to beat us. But Grapple yeah. could do that. I he mean, could. He's a good quarterback. It's, yeah. He's, he's a lot better than Tannehill. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> that, <laughs> yeah. that bar set real low. <laughs> he was doing pretty well, wasn't he? Garoppolo? Yeah, or Tannehill oh, towards the end of the right. season. He was yeah. serviceable. He was yeah. fine. He was better than Mariota. Yeah. But once again, speaking of low yeah, bars. Yeah, that's no true. Kidding. Yeah, Mariota. So, what happened to him? Yeah, I mean, Tannehill was fine. There's nothing special. Honestly, I think Garoppolo's a, a good quarterback. I don't think he's an amazing quarterback. Um, he's a little too eager to throw into traffic. He he's you know he learned under Tom Brady who fucking just throws those laser shots into traffic and they never get touched. Mm-hmm. He does it and most of the time he's he's successful. But every now and then it doesn't have quite enough heat on it and they slot you know swat him away or yeah. catch him or whatever. So um, he does need to be careful with that. But he is a he's a good quarterback. I think he's good. I think he's kind of a Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. Aaron Rodgers was kind of hiding behind Brett Favre and then all of a sudden Favre. Oh left. yeah, very similar. And then, I mean Grapple has been behind Brady and now he's you know got his own team and. I think he's a good quarterback, and I think he'll only get better with time. Yeah, of course. I just, I don't, you know, he's he's no at this point. Tom Brady or Aaron Rodgers, he just needs to be careful with some of those dangerous passes that he throws. But he's got a great arm, I and mean, he can get that bitch downfield, no problem. Yeah, uh, if he's going for hail marys or whatever, he's he's fun to watch uh, as long as he passes the ball. No. Yeah. <laughs> Stop handing it off so much, but it works. So whatever wins the game, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, uh, after the uh, Chiefs won their game, or I should say, the Chefs. <laughs> Old Snickers commercial, anybody? <laughs> Great job. Who are the chefs? Um, they, they asked Andy Reid on Monday, how do you celebrate the win? And he said, well, I had a cheeseburger and went to bed. That's how he celebrates losses, too. Though. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Is it, it's Tuesday. Is it just me or does Andy Reid look like a walrus? Of course yes, he, does. he does. He is such a walrus. And he also looks like the Kool-Aid man with all that red on him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Tom Brady, speaking of Brady, says he's open to going to a, no, a new team. Wow. A new team. We may see Tom Brady not on the Patriots this coming it's year. It's possible. Is ah. that just his way of trying to get more money out of the Patriots? Or do you think he might leave? He's just fucking around with everyone now. He Here. probably got asked that so many times to the point where he's like, ah, let me see what happens if I say, like, give them the answer they're looking for. Right. Then. Maybe Here. they'll stop asking me. Somebody brought up something very interesting to me, though. He goes, uh, don't forget, the Raiders are willing to pay just about anything. <laughs> I said, ooh, you're right. You could max contract Tom Brady for like two years. Yeah. <sighs> No way, dude. No? No. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, have you ever heard of this fucking guy on Twitter, uh, Sports Talk Barry or whatever? He's like this no. supreme troll. Okay. But, um, he's really funny, man, because he, he's the one that started saying that Brady is like a system quarterback. And I don't know. There might be something to that, dude. Like, he's always breaking down these plays like, oh, my God, look at this incredible pass by Tom Brady. And you see he throws it like five yards. <laughs> 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 it's like I never, hey, I never noticed caught it. it. <laughs> no, right? Tom, I, never, I never noticed that. Tom Brady's biggest asset is not his athleticism; it's his intelligence. It's true. He's a very smart quarterback, correct? Yeah. And you can see it when yeah. he plays. Mm-hmm. It's definitely not how athletic you. You see that guy try to run a ball? No oh, man, <laughs> it looks hilarious. Yeah, he, and we know he can't catch it anymore from that <laughs> Philly Super Bowl. Yeah, got lost in the sun or something. <laughs> That's for sure. Uh, and then speaking of free agent quarterbacks, Philip Rivers. Ouch. Moved, packed up his 19 did, kids yeah. and moved them all to Florida. What the yes. fuck? He's a free agent. Uh, people are saying he won't be back with the Chargers. 
Anybody have any insight? Scott, I know you're a Chargers fan. Um, well, one thing is he had two homes. He had a home in California and a home in, in Florida. Right. But he, yeah, he sold, he's left his home in California. Well. Uh, the the rumor, the only rumor I've heard was from an unreliable source <laughs> is Jacksonville. And why? Why would you go to Jacksonville? I have no idea. I'm sure. Like I said, it's an unreliable source. Yeah. Mm. Uh, what about I, the Buccaneers? Yeah. You know, they got nice running backs. They got actual tight ends you could throw to. Who is their quarterback? It was Jameis Winston, but I don't oh, think yeah. they're going to pay him. No, no, I don't think any, te- any team in Florida no. has a quarterback, so no. he just take his pick. Pretty much. I I would think if you're Rivers, you want to go somewhere where you actually have a shot. Because, I mean, that's all he's lacking in this Yeah, point. he's at like the end of his career. Yeah. So, I mean, he's lacking that's all he needs Bowl. is a ring. Yeah, he's definitely got enough money and enough kids. Maybe not enough money after all those kids. Uh, yeah. Just needs that ring, so we'll see what happens. Yeah, there. man. Uh, basketball news: The Pistons are looking to trade Derrick Rose. Here's the thing: I didn't know Derrick Rose was still playing. <laughs> I shit you not. I knew he was. I just wasn't sure which team. Yeah, I had no idea when I saw that headline. I was like, "Oh fuck, he's still playing." <laughs> yeah. yeah, I knew he was on the Pistons, but uh, I don't think he's. I mean, he's doing okay. I think. I think he's in the average like fifteen, sixteen a game off the bench. No idea. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay I, yeah, let's go with that. <laughs> but I was most intrigued by the people who are interested in him. Apparently, the Lakers and the Seventy Sixers are interested in a Derrick Rose. I don't know why the Lakers are interested because they already have a guy who sits on the bench and wears suits. That's Rondo. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Huh? And Boogie, for that matter. Yeah. Uh, we don't We don't need another guy who looks good in a suit on the bench. Yeah, I don't understand that. Yeah, I don't know why they would try to try to get Derrick Rose for that. Doesn't make any sense no. to me. Uh, even the 76ers, like, why? why? What's the point? That doesn't make any sense either. No. I don't know who would want Derrick Rose at this point. I mean, we're not playing NBA 2K. <laughs> you know, this is real basketball. Yeah. Like, you can't just put a bunch of names and it's going to work out. He's he's like the point guard version of Melo. He's always been extremely overrated. I would <laughs> never want him on my team. He's too injury prone when he's good. And when he's not good, he's just an average point guard. Yeah. It, w- it was a shame that he got hurt. I think uh, I would be thinking differently of him if he didn't get hurt. Oh, but. sure. I mean, he would have been a superstar had he continued mm-hmm. on his meteoric yeah. rise, but he's just yeah. too fragile. He got a couple of ACL tears. Right? Plays too hard, yeah. Yeah, that's what it is. Bounces off the floor. Plays so too freaking hard, yeah. hard, man. Made of glass. Looks good in a suit, though. He certainly wears the hell out of that Handsome. suit. Handsome. Boy, he's a sexy man. <laughs> and, and some sad news in basketball. Uh, <laughs> the Hawks' Chandler Parsons suffers oh, a brain dude. injury in a car crash. Oh, uh, suspected drunk driver yeah. hit him, and now he's in the hospital trying to recover. Uh, they're saying he's probably going to have to retire, yeah. won't be able to play anymore. Um, they're just trying to get him back and healthy as a person at this point, let alone a NBA player. Yeah. But, uh, head injuries and all kinds of shit. It's it's really sad story. Yeah. So they're they're uh, they showed a picture of his Bentley. It was all jacked up. Oh and, shit! Wow. Those things are tanks. So there's that, and then uh, finally, I don't know if you guys watched the Conor McGregor fight, no, Conor McGregor and uh, Cowboy Cerrone. That was an ass whipping. Forty seconds, yeah. Connor comes in there, and just from the get go is over. He comes in there and like he punched him, and Cowboy kind of ducked it, so he just shouldered him to the face (laughs) and gave him a couple shoulders. Then he kicked him in the face, and then he starts punching him. It was one of those things where uh, he's down the ground and he just pounded him. And I was like, "Fuck, they're gonna call this fight," and they weren't calling it. If it was a lesser fight, if it wasn't like the main event, they would have called this thing. But uh, Herb Dean, who's my favorite UFC ref, let that thing go for a little bit. And he was just pounding him and pounding him. And finally, he's like, all right, I got to call this shit. <laughs> and, and you could tell that Connor was ready for him to call it. Because a lot of times when they pull him off somebody, like they're really pulling him off. And they're like kind of still swinging in the air. All he did was tap Connor. And he just got off. Connor. He was done. <laughs> yeah. He's like, fuck, I was getting winded over here. <laughs> so uh, really, really boring fight. But uh, he kicked his ass. So. That's what I heard. Yeah, I was... Over before I knew it, yeah. forty yeah. seconds or something like that. It's the whole yeah. reason I can't order those UFC pay per views. The big fights, like you, you, you get ready to watch them, and either it's uh, five extremely boring rounds yeah. of fighting, <laughs> or it's over in forty seconds, and you just paid like sixty dollars for a pay per view. It's always the undercard fights that are better than the main event. It's true. I just can't buy those anymore. Yeah, I, I think that's what you. Do they still make that a part of the pay-per-view, though, is the undercards? Or is that like the prelims that are on free on TV? I don't know, to be honest with you. Oh, okay. I was out. It was the same night I was at Dave & Buster's. Mm-hmm. And uh, we had left for a minute and came back in. Or We had left the party and then met up with the rest of them at Dave & Buster's. As we walked in, that fight was getting ready to start. And I was like, oh, all right, I'll watch the fight. Yeah. And then I was, you know, 40 seconds later, I was done. 
and the fight was over also. Um, so I don't know if you have to pay for the undercard fights. No, oh, okay. Or not. But. I kind of felt like they had a good thing going at first when it was like uh, the whole card was kind of entertaining and it was like all the belts. Like it was kind of like a combination between uh, boxing and the fact that in the, in the sense that it's real fighting right. and wrestling in the sense that it's like all the titles are on the line every month. You know yeah, what I they, mean? They'd always make you defend the yeah, title. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So it was exciting in that sense. But if they're not doing that anymore, and like you said, it's... Yeah, I don't... I haven't really been super into UFC. Like, Me I was either. really, really into it for a few years. Me too. But now it's probably been three, four years since I've been in And at the, when the last time I was watching, I mean, that's what they would do. You'd pay for the whole thing, and every fight was a title match unless yeah. somebody was it's injured. It's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I got to watch it. It was fun watching the guy get his ass whipped, but, uh, it was a pretty boring fight. Yeah. I think it's turning into boxing a little more now. Mm. Yeah. A little bit. Sadly. Not in a good way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not in a good way. So, uh, old timey word of the week. Can I, Oh yes. Before you move on, please. This, this is kind of a mixture, uh, sports and crotch talk thing. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, it's the thing with the Astros and the Red Sox. Oh cheating. yeah. <laughs> and the <laughs> thing that, that really, the thing that really bothers me is the fact that both years it was the Dodgers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the, and so what happens to the Dodgers? Nothing. These teams are going to get, you know, they're, the Astros are going to get their little punishment and the Red Sox. Alex Cora should never, he, he should be banned from baseball in Agreed. my opinion. I, and I think Pete Rose should be reinstated. I mean, I've always said that, but yeah. now more than ever, Pete yeah. Rose should I think, be reinstated. I, yeah, I think Cora should be just totally done. If he's not but, banned from baseball, Pete Rose should be reinstated. Exactly. Two years in a row, the Dodgers got fucked, mm-hmm. and they're not going to get anything for this? Well, here's the thing. I don't think, mm-hmm. as a Dodger fan, I don't think the Dodgers should receive the title. Me neither. They did no, not no, win no, it. not that. I think it should be vacated. I think mm-hmm. for those years, the Astros won, no winner, no champion. Why don't they do that? Why, does, why is professional sports so afraid to do that all the time? Right. Now, somebody was saying, like, oh, in the Olympics, if they get caught doping, you know, the medals move down one, so bronze becomes yeah. gold and so on. You want I don't do want that. that. No. no. I don't need I, that shit. Vacate the title, Shawn Michaels style, when mm-hmm. he got jumped in an alley. No champion. <laughs> And then, you know, the next year, whoever's a champion is a champion. Yeah. And, and I agree with that. And not just for the historic perspective either, but like even the player's perspective. Like right now, they don't give a shit. Like you could cheat. And as long as you get that fucking title, nobody gives a shit. Yeah. You still have the memories of holding it up. Everyone's going to. Yeah. We yeah. got the dumbass shirts with the hats and right. shit. Yeah. Like everyone, They made their money. It doesn't matter. You know what I mean? Drink There's. That. They're still, champagne. Yeah, they're right. still going to get the rings and all that. They ought to confiscate all that shit, vacate it, and say, do it again, and this is what's going to fucking happen to you. Well, and one thing that somebody was bringing up is the livelihoods of people who are involved in that game. Think of how horrible they made you Darvish look. And what if it was all based on cheating? Exactly. I mean, you Darvish looked like a fucking idiot. Ruined that man's career. Terrible. Ruined him. Ruined him. And maybe it was all based on the fact that they were cheating. Exactly. Or maybe he's a shit pitcher. I don't know. We'll never know. Yeah. yeah. And then they didn't punish the players. And I said, okay, there's plausible deniability that it was coming only from the managers. And then the manager said to the players, look, we've got a little insight. When you hear us being a trash can, mm-hmm. don't fucking swing. Okay, fine. Plausible deniability. Mm-hmm. I'll go with it. But now this bullshit where Altuve is wearing a buzzer under his shirt. <laughs> If that's the truth, he should be banned from baseball too, because he's clearly in on it. Right? Yeah, it's just like the the uh, the Black Sox scandal from what right. early 1900s. I forget which year. Yeah. Um, yeah. Here, here's what I think they should do, and this is kind of. I mean, even, even if it's not the Dodgers, even if it's another team, but that's two years in a row, and they're finding these teams. I think whatever, like 50 million per team. That money should go to the Dodgers, mm-hmm. and the draft picks that they took away; those draft picks should go to the Dodgers. That's one thing I said: should we get their draft picks? And even if it was, even if it was the Padres, I would say, yeah, give the Padres the money and the draft picks because yeah. they got. I mean, whatever team got fucked because I mean they cheated; they won, or at least you know, like the whatever team was in last place that year, give them the money they, and they the should, picks or something. Like, yeah. Whoever lost should be compensated. Yeah, should, yeah. Because I mean, unless they can. You know, investigate and find out. Oh, well, the Dodgers cheated too. Okay, yeah. well then it, it's hard whatever. because I obviously don't think the Dodgers need fifty million dollars. They're doing no, quite well. Not. Yeah. So it's like, all right, uh, I don't know if I agree with them getting the money. The picks, I kind of agree with because they got fucked out of it. Yeah. Though because the Astros are in first place, they'll be shitty picks. Yeah. So what's the matter? I, that one's hard. I do think the title should be vacated. Mm-hmm. I do think any player that knew about it. And is possibly wearing a buzzer or some sort of technology that tells them, you know, not to swing or to swing should be banned from baseball. I mean, we really should have known because Altuve is not that good of a player. And all of a sudden we made him look like a fucking superstar. So 
it, it's bullshit. Uh, I say the Astros shouldn't be able to play for a year as a team entirely. And somebody's like, well, what about the ones that weren't there when it happened? Sucks for them. Should yeah. they come to the Astros? Yeah, yeah, cheating. Yeah. I don't know. You know, I say let them play the next season. But put cheater on their fucking hat. <laughs> there you go. You know what I mean? Yeah. Put something on it. It's like, yeah, wear that, you son of a bitch. I've been calling them the Astros, you know, two S's, like ass, <laughs> so much that my phone spells it that way now. Oh, really? <laughs> if I spell Astros properly, it corrects it to ass. True. Yeah. But maybe they change yeah. their name for when you're to the it's asterisks. Just, asterisks, yeah. Something. Or anybody who was on the team when that happened doesn't get to play, and it just it's the fucking replacements mm-hmm. for a year. And they, I was like, but the only problem with that is they do really bad. They'll get good picks. So make sure you take away their picks for a couple of years, yeah. too. Um, yeah, they need they need more punishment than that. Uh, yeah, I don't think they were punished enough. No, no, if Pete Rose is banned from ever being in the Hall of Fame, that was crazy. They need way more punishment for yeah. this. This is not a, this is way worse than gambling. Mm-hmm. You can beat your wife, you can be a racist, and now you can cheat with technology. But yeah. God forbid you bet that you'd win. <laughs> Where do we draw this fucking moral and line in the sand? Yeah. Whatever team was the victim should be somehow compensated. Yeah, I don't Dodgers, think Giants. I don't care who it is. They, but they shouldn't should be, be handed any titles, especially if it was two years in a row yeah no, no not not no titles title, no. but yes i i don't i cannot decide what it should be but there should be something that gets given to the people that were fucked yeah so uh whether, i just had to get that off my chest yeah i i kind of forgot to put that on the rundown and so it's a yeah. good job well yeah, i think big, what baseball is going to do is they're just going to wait it out until we all forget about it that's going to be their hey, home that's now. what they'll do yeah of course yeah they're going to wait till someone gets caught doping and like yeah. oh look what ryan braun did yeah. again you know? again <laughs> <laughs> son of a bitch <laughs> that doping son of a bitch yeah so uh yeah fuck you astros yeah i don't that's like right. you to begin with and i really don't and like again you alex cora should be Gun for life. Yeah, oh, all of them. And yeah. Pete Rose reinstated. Altuve. He gambled gone. to for his own team to win. Yeah, he didn't throw anything. Yes. He didn't change he didn't the cheat. outcome. He didn't use any kind of technology yeah. to cheat. He said, "I want my team to win, so I'll put whatever much money well, on my team." Do you team. think if you go up to LeBron or Kobe or anybody like, "Hey, you gonna lose tonight?" Fuck no, I'm not gonna lose yeah. tonight. In fact, I'm so confident that I'm a badass that I'll put money that I'm gonna win. What's wrong with that? Yeah, he didn't cheat to do it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, this is classic baseball. Classic. Yeah. You know the old old white man's club. <laughs> it's ridiculous. I can't stand uh, I'll tell baseball. You say that on MLK Day. <laughs> <laughs> he would agree. Yes. Ba- n- no organization like NFL is pretty racist. Baseball's worse. Way worse. <laughs> Um, anyways, all right. I had a dream that baseball was fair. <laughs> then you woke up. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck you, Astros. Uh, I had a dream. Okay. And, and Houston, baseball. keep listening. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Our, but our, we love Houston. That's right. Our, yeah. Our our city of the week next week. Yeah. I have a feeling they won't be. <laughs> uh, old timey word of the week is Nave. Like K N A V E. Nave. What? It's a male servant. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> I didn't know that was a thing. Oh, man. Yeah. So many things can be said. What a word. Yeah. Nave? For... Yeah. Hey, Nave, bring me a beer. <laughs> so, yeah. Wow. Uh, all right. Let's class this up a bit. <laughs> this one's a classy dame with a great palate. It's Beer Babe of the Week. It is indeed. You can find her on the grams at pour, as in like pouring a beer, P-O-U-R. Poor girl, 777. Her name is Yvette. And this one, she's drinking a Hazy Star, Hazy Juicy IPA oh. from Wild Barrel Brewing. Uh, extremely easy on the eyes. Oh, yeah. And uh, drinks some... Can't talk because I'm biting my knuckle. <laughs> Keep biting. <laughs> uh, and uh, drinks some very delicious beers. Yeah, so like those hazies. Yes. So make sure you do yourselves a favor. Go follow her on the grams at poorgirl777. Of course, that's poor like you're pouring yeah. a beer. She is not poor. No, no. <laughs> not no. not poor. Fin- well, I mean, I don't know her financial situation. <laughs> but maybe a vet could let us know. <laughs> She's uh she's rich on life. Yes, exactly. So uh, all right, I think it's that time to not only make a call, but to start boozing on a budget. All right, We're boozing on a budget. We can't buy pockets like you know this. Boozing budget beer on tap is hopeless. We all sober, beer so fly, can't buy. You know this. Boozing. Pops and malts. Oh my. Stay focused. Boozing on a budget. Yeah, we are. I haven't boozed on a budget in quite some time, so uh, I was f- happy to find this one. 
This is tiramisu pastry, str- oh, pastry shit. stout. What? Oh, man. Yeah. Sounds like a fucking snack already. It dude. is. It's a dessert, man. Uh, tiramisu pastry stout comes to us from Campanology Brewing. If you don't remember, Campanology is that weird brewery that doesn't actually exist that you can only find at Trader Joe's. They're out of like Wisconsin. They brew at another brewery's location. And we had their coffee Kolsch and their hazy and their uh, cacophony pale ale. Like they always put out these pretty yeah. solid beers. Are you saying Trader Jose isn't real? <laughs> It's different. Trader Jose, oh, I think, is made by Gordon Biersch. Don't oh, quote me on that. Yeah, or cool. at least it was at some point. Pop, pop a hole in my joke there. <laughs> yes. Trader Jose is mucho real. Ah. Uh, this is another line that they have at Trader Joe's. You can only find it there, and it's always super cheap. This is three ninety nine mm. for a bomber, which you're thinking, like, all right, that's fairly cheap, but it's 8%. So wow. that kind of ABV, it's fairly well priced. Uh, 8%, 3.83 on untapped, and a 92 on Beer Advocate. It's a stout brewed with vanilla and chocolate. Oh, my God. It's Damn. dessert in a bottle. It says pour over vanilla ice cream or pair Ooh. with a cannoli or yeah. a slice of tiramisu. Or just drink it. Or just drink <laughs> it. Uh, I found a little write-up from Trader Joe's. They say the 8% ABV Campanology Tiramisu Pastry Stout is dark in color with chocolate, vanilla, and cinnamon notes on the nose. The texture is denser than a regular stout, and the flavor is highly reminiscent of its namesake Italian confection. Owing the expert combination of uh, cocoa and chocolate extracts the cocoa nibs and hints of vanilla and cinnamon that went into the beer making process. Oh my god. You a fan? I, and the mouthfeel. <laughs> <laughs> Back so to fancy. this. Is fluffy. If okay. I could call it anything. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's like it's like rich. Like I, I don't know. It's it is like, you know. Like it's almost dessert. like um, marshmallowy. Yes. The mouthfeel. Very fluffy. Yeah, I like that. I can dig it, man. Yeah. Scott, what say you? I'm loving this stuff. Yeah, it's very dessert, very yeah. rich. Yeah. I can even smell it. Yeah. Wow, that's pretty good right yeah. now. Yeah. yeah, at this point, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's very uh, pungent yeah. in the right ways. I get a lot of <laughs> cinnamon on the nose, a little bit of chocolate, and uh, I even smell a hint of booze in there, too. Dude, I think I might just keep a little of this to like you know block out some of that funk. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I like it. A uh, lot of cinnamon and chocolate on the flavor, not in a choco vesa kind of way. Like that's got like the Mexican spicy to it. Oh. This is not spicy. This has cinnamon and chocolate and that mouthfeel, like you said, like very pillowy and marshmallowy. Oh my god! But not thick. No, not not like motor oily, sticky. Right. Uh, just like a marshmallow, like, right? Kind of floats in your mouth. And I think that's the, what most of them do is they do kind of make it like you said, like you know, sticky thick. Like, yeah, this isn't that man. It's sticky, very icky. well. They fucking nailed it. Whatever they were going for, I think they got it. And this is awesome. Yeah, this is this is a good one. And uh, this is eight percent, eight percent, my friend. And it's uh, on a budget. Yeah, oh you get the best Trader Joe's in the world, right? No kidding. Yeah. This is three ninety nine for a bomber. Fuck I mean, yeah! I, I moved recently. Score from one. Trader Joe area to another. Uh-huh. Both Trader Joe areas I've lived in have like lousy selection. Of, oh, really? Yeah. This one should be at all. I mean, I can't say all, but like all local Trader Joe's to us at the release in right. Southern California. Everyone I've walked into, I've seen it. Um, maybe, maybe they're I'm out of it. Right or place. I don't ask know, them. Ask them about it. Dude. Yeah. Ask them they got that tiramisu. I've, I've looked and, you know, the new Trader Joe's looks like the old Trader Joe's. Fuck. Yeah, come to my Trader Joe's. So then. the brewery yeah, is I, I guess they got to move again. <laughs> yeah. Brewery isn't I'll real. Next door to you. Yeah, but this Please beer don't. is legit. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the thing. If you look up this brewery, like at the only thing they don't have a website, they don't have social media, anything. The only thing you can find if you really do some deep digging, I cannot remember the name, is this other brewery called like I want to call it like Octopus Brewing, but it's not. It's something <laughs> like that. And they're in Wisconsin, and it's just like on a dirt road in the middle of nowhere. Get hit the fuck. There's a building, that. so I assume they contract brew with this other brewery. And only sell their shit to Trader Joe's, wow. I guess. Wow. So I, I I looked them up. You know, you find them on uh, Untapped and stuff. Yeah. Hmm. And people post like people are getting it, and everyone's talking about it being from Trader Joe's. But uh, yeah, I it's so weird. It's like a mystery brewery. You so. have to ask. Yeah, ask them about it. Too. Otherwise, I'll just move in here with you. I'm sure you'll find yeah, it. I'm, yeah. Yeah. You know. In fact, I'll help you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure it's out there. So everybody approves of uh, oh, definitely, our budget yeah. beer. Yeah. Stuff, yeah. Good. yeah, it's got a little warmth in that booze on the back end, too. Uh, yeah. All right, let's quickly do a little bit of news. We're running out of time. Extra, extra, drink all about it. It's time for booze news. It is indeed uh, Canarchy, who's the parent company of uh, Oscar Blues, High Lie, Three Weavers, 
all still craft, but uh, mm-hmm. they have been seeing some increases. Their shipments are at 14% in 2019. Um, they've been putting out these really, and the reason I bring this up is because they've done a couple of cool things. First of all, they stopped doing 12 packs. They started doing 15 packs just because they're cooler. <laughs> no other reason. Like it's different. <laughs> you're like, all right, cool. And they're also doing these mixed IPA packs where they do like an IPA from uh, Cigar City, one from Oscar Blues, one from Three Weavers, one from what I can't forget who I else. Can get with that. Yeah, yeah, it's really cool. It's interesting. It's the first mixed brewery pack where you I have like multiple that. breweries in one pack. They're the first ones to ever do it. And it seems to be one of the things that's working. Like we hear about all these breweries whose numbers are decreasing or they're selling out or whatever. These guys are having the opposite. Complete canarchy. Complete canarchy. <laughs> and they're not doing it on the backs of Seltzer, yeah. which is, you know, how Boston Beer's doing so well right now. Mm-hmm. So um it's it's very interesting. Oh, here's here's the four that are in the IPA packet. Cigar City's Highlight, Oscar Blues, Can of Bliss IPA, Three Weavers, X Patriot, which is a great IPA, and Deep Ellum's IPA. So so what? how do they divide that up between 15? Or no, it's the 12th. That, I think, is a 12th. Oh, okay. I think okay. the 15 is something. Just that, something different. Yeah, just a bunch of randos. It'll be like their own Oscar Blues beers. Or yeah, whatever, I got so. you. I think more beers. Yeah. yeah. So uh, anyways, what they're doing is pretty cool and seems to be working. So that's kind of fun. Uh, Pabst is launching a new craft beer brand. Craft what? beer, in quotes. Captain Pabst <laughs> will be their flagship <laughs> IPA. Uh, Paps Brewing Company is launching a line of craft beers as the craft segment has matured and sales of craft offerings have slowed to single-digit growth. LA-based headquarters maker of Paps Blue Ribbon announced that the launch of Captain, Captain Paps, a standalone craft beer brand outside of the PBR family, and the launch of its flagship offering, Seabird IPA. Captain Paps' line will uh, of beers make homage to the company namesake, Frederick Pabst who was a ship captain on Lake Michigan before <laughs> marrying into the family that owned Milwaukee-based Best's Brewing Company, which was later renamed Pabst in 1889. Wow. Mm. Seabird IPA, which is brewed with Magnum, Citric, Cascade, and Mosaic Hops, is named for the last ship Pabst captained. The beer checks in at 4.5%. has 45 IBUs. Pabst beached the Seabird on the shore of Lake Michigan's Whitefish Bay in 1863 storm and then abandoned his nautical career for his father-in-law's brewery. Pabst died in 1904. Oh, man. From there. Dang. Free wife beaters with every case. (laughs) That's only a regular Pabst. Oh, oh, sorry. (laughs) Yes, PBR. Uh, And then finally, I'll I'll mention that Rogue Brewing is trying to rebuild and build new skate parks across the country with the sale of their (laughs) Dreamland Lager. Uh, Dreamland was originally released to fund a skate park improvement up where they are in Oregon. And now they're re-releasing it with funds to support skate parks across the country. Interesting. Interesting and really a shame. I never knew any cool skaters in high school. They're all dick bags. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean they were dick bags? Sk- were you a skater? No. Fuck oh, okay. I'm just curious. <laughs> I just, they were all just fucking douches. Really? Yeah. Oh. In high school, at least. And maybe, oh. they're, maybe they're cool now. Maybe it's a cool thing to do. I don't know. Uh, hmm. They had invented skateboards when Nothing I was like in a high bunch school. of drunks. Skateboarders running around. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Helping <laughs> yeah. to rebuild the park. That's so. good, I guess. Yeah, at least they're sure. doing they're doing something for the community. It's fine. I, yeah. I joke around. <laughs> so uh so there's that. Okay. That's everything for us today. Thank you all for listening. Thanks for listening to our very sexy sick voices. <laughs> you guys hey, everybody. that'll be me <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Dan's gonna catch the plague. Yeah, I think yeah. so. I swear we're not contagious. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Yeah, at least I'm not. I can't speak for that guy. Hey, Dan. Yeah. Oh, jeez, that's okay. the one that did it. Yeah. <laughs> Traveled through that microphone mm-hmm. to your headset. That's right. Down your throat. Wait a minute. Uh, thank you all for listening. Find us at theunfilteredgentleman.com on the social medias at theunfilteredgentleman and, of course, at unfilteredgents on Twitter. Call us. Leave us a voicemail just like Fontana Jim. Don't forget Fontana Jim for president. Oh, 805-538-BEER-2337. I think that's everything. Thank you all for joining us. Come back again next week. And on that note, good night, everybody. Good night.